Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 15, Pythagorean Theorem Revisited. All right, classwork, proof of the Pythagorean Theorem. So we're given this triangle ABC, triangle ABC with sides A, B, and C, where C is the hypotenuse, and angle C is a right angle, therefore this is a right triangle. We're going to prove the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In other words, this leg plus this leg squared squared equals the hypotenuse squared. All right, so to prove this, we're going to use this triangle, and we're going to begin by drawing a segment from the right angle perpendicular to side AB, which means that. By drawing a segment perpendicular through that point C, and then we're going to label the intersection point D. So that is done for us right here. And so I will draw that up. Okay, so here it is neatly drawn. There's segment CD. So this segment is drawn from the vertex angle C to a point on the hypotenuse, which is side AB, which we call lowercase c, to a point D that is perpendicular, making a right angle. So this is perpendicular to AB. Side CD is perpendicular to AB. It is called an altitude. Okay, so in doing that, we have actually created three triangles. Just drawing one altitude, split this up to this small triangle, this bigger blue triangle, and then the original triangle. So now we have three triangles. So if I move this triangle down and flip it and then rotate it, like so. Then it is this triangle here. If I move this triangle down here, flip it, and rotate it, then I have this triangle here. Now they didn't make their drawing very close. It should be identical. And then finally our original triangle, which just comes down, and that is triangle ABC. So just assume that this is the same as what we had because they just didn't draw it to scale. Somehow they made a mistake when they were making this printout. Um, a, D, C is close. This is identical, and this one's a little bit off. Okay, but they're supposed to be identical. Okay, so anyhow, from there, we now have three similar triangles. And from our prior knowledge about similarity, all we need is two angles. So let's start with the red triangle. Since I have this right angle D, which is right here, that's 90 degrees. The original triangle had this 90 degree angle, so that's one angle they have in common that corresponding angles are congruent. And then this angle A right here is also this angle A right here, or in the original here. So that is angle-angle similarity. So we have triangle ADC is similar to triangle ACB. And that goes for the green triangle because it is actually similar it is actually congruent this one so then it is also similar it's got angle c corresponds to angle c and is congruent angle a is congruent to angle a so we have angle angle similarity there and then let me get rid of this red mark here and then explain our similarity with the blue so we have angle d which is 90 degrees which in the original triangle is right here so that's Angle D is congruent to angle C. And then we have angle B shared with angle B. So angle B is congruent to itself. Therefore, we have two angles in that one as well. So we have three triangles that are similar. 
Okay. Okay, so now we need to identify the segments that comprise side C. So here is side C, right over here. Little C would be right here. And that would be unknown. So we're going to call that X. So I'm going to say AD, the length of AD equals X. And the length of BD equals Y. So BD is over here, so we're going to say the length of BD equals Y. Okay, so why are we doing that? Well, X and Y, using the notation, we see that side C is equal to the sum of the lengths X and Y. So here is AD from the little red triangle, and here is side DB from the little blue triangle, and that's y. So x plus y equals c. Okay, so we just have this segment here, which is here, and this segment here, db, which is this segment here. And the sum of the two is equivalent to our original hypotenuse c. Okay. And now if we consider our little red triangle and the big green one, since that's our original, we can write a statement about corresponding sides being equal in ratio that helps us reach our goal of showing that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So using triangle ADC, the red one, and triangle ACB, the green one, we can write a proportion because they are similar triangles so now I know AD side X corresponds with, and then with B, so AD is to B as B side B here is to side C over here. So this side is to this side as this side is to this side because they're similar triangles. So now if we solve for x and cross multiply, we get c times x equals b squared, b times b. And then we divide both sides by c, and we get x equals b squared divided by c. So x equals b squared divided by c. Now we're going to focus on this triangle, these two triangles here. these two triangles here. Okay, so we know that side A right here is to Y, which is BD. So this side corresponds to this side, and we called it Y. And then we can take the hypotenuse C which is to this side here, which we called, let me move this triangle a little bit, A. Okay, so I'm going to go through that again. It's this side is to this side, as this side is to this side. A is to Y, as C is to A. Okay, get that stuff out of the way. And then when we cross multiply, we get C times Y equals A squared, and dividing both sides by C, we get Y equals A squared divided by C. Okay, now if we go back and focus on something. Right here, we said that X plus Y Right, this piece plus this piece equals the whole thing. So I can represent that as x plus y equals c. So we know x plus y equals c. Okay. And if we use the information, we want to show that a squared plus b squared equals c squared by substituting in what we found x to ny to equal. 
So now I'm going to substitute x for b squared over c. So that can be replaced with b squared divided by c plus y, which is a squared divided by c. That's going to equal c. Okay? And now to get rid of our fractions, we're going to multiply this entire equation by c. And these c's would cancel, leaving b squared. Plus, these c's would cancel, leaving a squared. Equals, and then c times c is c squared. And hence, we have proven that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now I can just rewrite this by re rearranging my addition because addition is commutative. I can say this. Okay. And that is proving the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So now we're going to apply this knowledge to explore a geometric consequent consequence of the proof we just completed. We begin with the right triangle with the altitude drawn before. So here's the right triangle with the altitude drawn before. So here's the right triangle. This is x, this is y, x plus y equals c. This is a, and this is b. All righty. So once that's done, we can draw three squares on the right triangle. Notice, okay, so what, I, what they're saying is, is if I draw a square from my altitude point here down, remember a square is equal in sides. This doesn't look like it is, but this is a square. So this side here equals this side here because squares are four sides with equal length. So y equals c equals c. So this is the, the square is the whole side hypotenuse because this is more of a rectangle here. So if I draw a square, what they're saying is if you draw a square here, all four sides are equal because of right because of x plus y, that's a length c, that's a length c, that's a length c, that's a length c. And then this is side b. So if I make a square of all four sides, length b here, and then side a is this length, so the same length, same length, same length, we have three squares formed by the side lengths of the right triangle. So then we're going to divide this square into two rectangles from our altitude point right here. So that split this side into these two pieces, and now we have rectangle Roman numeral one and rectangle Roman numeral two. So the saying that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're saying that the area of a, that's a squared, plus the area of b equals the whole area of c. So now we're going to focus on areas. So I want to find out what the area of rectangle 1 is. Okay, so now we want to talk about the area of triangle 1. And its length is x, and its width is c. So the area of i equals x times c. And if I go back up to my last portion here, x times c, well, x is b squared over c. It's right here. x is b squared divided by c. So now if I replace that, that would be b squared divided by c times c. Right? X times C area is now B squared over C times C. And when those C's cancel, that's just going to equal B squared. So the area of I is equivalent to B squared, which is the area of this square, which is pretty cool. Okay? Now we're going to do the same thing for triangle B2. So the area of triangle 2 equals Y times c. The area is y times c. 
and the area of 2, therefore, is, and if I go back to my last page here, y was represented as a squared divided by 2, c, a squared divided by c. So I'm going to write a squared divided by c times c. So the area of triangle, or not triangle, of rectangle 2 is a squared divided by c times c. The c's will now cancel, and I get the area of rectangle 2 equaling a squared. So that means that the yellow rectangle is equal to the area of the yellow square, and the blue rectangle is equal to the area of the square A. So if this is equal to that, and that is equal to that, the sum is equal to C squared. So that would prove that the area of 2, the area of 2 plus the area from triangle 1, the yellow one, equals the area of triangle 3, which would be this one. And I know that the area of triangle 1 was b squared. That's right here. The area of triangle 2 is a squared. And the area of triangle 3 is a times a or a squared, which is equivalent to c squared. which is this area plus this area equaling this entire area. So I don't want area triangles, area three, that was wrong. Equals triangle three is A right here. So I wanted, so let's get rid of that. That's not right. What I'm saying is the area of triangle two plus the area of a rectangle and the area of rectangle one equals the area of square C, which is C squared. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, that is the end of lesson 15. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.